Today we're going to be pulling a transmission out of the uh, a Chevy Gladiator. It has a 5.7 liter Vortec in it and a 4L60E transmission. It has removed the four 18 millimeter bolts that connect the drive shaft to the rear differential. Now a tap with a hammer to loosen everything up now that all four bolts are removed. We're going to slide the drive shaft back like so. This is the cross member that I'm going to be taking the bolts out of. We've got two bolts on the passenger side and on the driver's side is three bolts. Then there's a center bolt here holding the mount that bolts to the transmission tail. So I'm going to heat up the nut side of it here with my torch and then I'm going to put an 18 millimeter socket on the back of it. That ought to do it. I think that's going to do it. Ooh, that's a hot bolt. <laughs> now there's a 15 millimeter bolt right here for the mount that goes to the tail of the transmission. Uh. There we have it. All the bolts are out of the cross bracket. Here you see the crossover. We have a crossover pipe here. That's going to be in the way. We're going to have to remove it. There's the connector for the oxygen sensor. Which we're going to see if we can manage to get it apart here now. I have a 15 millimeter socket here and uh, an extension to a half inch drive <coughs> for one thing. Now you never want to put an impact wrench on these because you're just asking for it. <laughs> you might well strip round off the heads of the bolts. You certainly don't want to do that. Let's get a second bolt cherry red. That's what it's going to take to get them off of there. And she looks plenty red to me. Get her off there before she starts cooling down too much. There she goes. Okay. And she's loose. There she is. And this plate with this crossover is half of the converter wants to come out going towards the back of the vehicle. You've seen it on the other side what the procedure is. You want to heat them up. Don't put an impact wrench on them. And just heat them up good and they'll come off for you. 15 millimeter. Remove heat shield from the side of the transmission with a 10 millimeter socket. Unplug this wire harness by squeezing on the sides of the harness, the back side and the front side of the harness, like so. The lines are corroded so bad actually that this top line had begun leaking and it's a bad spot right up here about where the tip of the screwdriver is. So I think what I'm going to try is pull this rubber thing back. There it goes. There. That's the top transmission line off. And now for the bottom one, could maybe be saved. Here you see a clip on a hydraulic line that can be removed like so. The wiring harness for the selector switch 
has two two connectors these connectors are glued glued in so you want to heat them up before you try to pull them out that's what we're going to do right now perhaps now there that did it there we go you can see the glue in there see it is glued together but we got her now we're going to move the transmission selector all the way down into low. And now that that's done, we're going to put a wrench on her and loosen this bolt. You can gently pry. This is plastic, so you have to be careful, but you can put some gentle amount of pressure on there she goes she's off of there remove the inspection plate at the front of the transmission it's held on by four 10 millimeter bolts here here there's one up here and then there's one over here Good. Good. Here. So we're going to remove the two 15 millimeter bolts that hold the starter to the block. And back off the starter to the point where you can get the inspection plate out and there we have it. Now, in my case, I'm putting the starter back on because I'm going to be running a compression test on this engine. Three bolts bolting from the starter ring gear to the torque converter. And we're, they are 15 millimeter. We're going to remove the first one now. There goes one. These are really short bolts. And it's a good idea to keep track of these. I wonder if we take this off. There's a little inspection cover down. And the third one at last. On the bottom of the transmission bell housing, we have this inspection cover here that you can just pop off of there. Here we have the starter ring gear, and then we have the torque converter. You just want to take and put your screwdriver in here, pry the torque converter back. It won't go back far, but it should go back a little bit. So now I brought my floor jack in, and I'm going to jack up the transmission high enough to remove this cross member. That way I can lower the transmission down more and be able to get at some of the bolts. Good. There we go. The cross member is out. Because it wants to come into contact with the firewall, you don't want to damage it. Once you have that unplugged, now, you can lower the transmission down a little bit to a point where things are more accessible. Mine was rusted bad. It was leaking here, so I just snapped it off because the line was shot. This line I want to save, so I'm using a 19 millimeter, and I'm just unthreading it from the transmission. So that'll work. The transmission filler tube is bolted onto the rear of the left bank here with a 13 millimeter bolt and one under the hood. Here is a 10 millimeter bolt just above the alternator. The transmission dipstick tube was pulled straight out of the front of the vehicle. This 13 millimeter nut must be removed which 
it's attached to this bracket here that it's a strap that holds the wiring harness for the transmission in place the bolt itself is actually part of the the mounting bolts that hold the engine to the transmission now the nut has been removed and we're going to pull the wire harness support and as you can see that's the top right bolt here is the next bolt and here is the third bolt so we're going to remove the top two bolts leave the bottom bell housing bolt on the right side in place it needs to only be finger tight the top left bolt on the bell housing of the transmission has been made accessible by having lowered the transmission down uh, several inches at the tail the bell housing bolt at the top here which is on the driver's side and holds the fuel lines on to the bell housing is a 14 millimeter bolt when we remove this bolt we'll remove the fuel lines bracket and then we'll get to the 15 millimeter bolt which will be a deep well now that the fuel line bracket has been removed from the engine mounting bolt we'll now take a deep well 15 millimeter over top of the engine mounting bolt it sits down on there and loosen that the second mounting bolt from the top is now being removed which holds the transmission shift cable to the bell housing the left bottom remove the left bottom bolt from the bell housing on the left side which holds the shift cable bracket the left side is now free let us return to the passenger side of the vehicle and now we're going to take the last bolt out the one on the passenger side at the bottom just above the bell housing or just above the starter mount we'll remove this bolt Now the transmission is free and we're going to slide it back I can lose some must be another pull. Grab her by the tail fan in and pull her back. There she goes. There she goes. And the transmission is now out of the vehicle. Anticipated. Great. That's what we want. We'll slide it right off the jack. <laughs> 